So let's talk about science. When did these scientists first get interested? I've always wanted to be a scientist ever since I was tiny. I was probably about 10, 11 or 12 when I thought about how cool science was. I, I can't remember exactly how old I was, but I think I was in upper 3A. <laughs> which probably would make me about 11. I was a real geek and in fact I was quite unpopular because I was the girl who was always sitting in the front row raising my hand and answering the questions. It didn't endear me to my classmates, needless to say, but I love science. Uh, I think I was definitely in primary school, but it wasn't, I'm, now I'm a biological scientist, uh, but then it was more physical sciences that I think I was interested in. Uh, I think that was the sort of space travel thing and, and seeing shuttles going up into space that really captured my imagination. So up until the age of about six, I wanted to be a space fireman. A what? Space fireman. My, my friend Colin and I were convinced that there would be a need. We were children of the space age, which is a lot of the motivation for being a scientist anyway and we thought there would be a real need for space firemen until we, it was pointed out to us there was no oxygen in space and so fires were pretty much going to go out of their own accord. I was motivated by a program called Star Trek and in Star Trek they had this uh, Lieutenant Uhuru who was a communications officer and when I was growing up there were very, f there were hardly any black uh, females in that kind of role on TV, who you could identify with. Usually the roles were either working in the kitchen or perhaps being a nurse, or it was usually um, a, a role that wasn't considered, um, that, was, that was considered more traditional for black females. And Lieutenant Fuhuru, she kind of broke that mould and she was really inspiring. Science was cool. I look forward to biology and chemistry lessons and physics lessons because you got to do things rather than just sit uh, watching a blackboard or whiteboard or whatever and it was active rather than being very formal and lectured at. So yeah you could say that I was obsessed by science from a very early age and, and I loved school <laughs> so I was a bit weird. <laughs> I always liked science very much and was much better at science than classics and we spent much much more time doing classics at the school where I was at than anything. I mean Latin and Greek occupied all the morning in my memory and it was really tedious. But we had one science lesson a week. But also it was my father and he, he asked me one day what do you want to be when you grow up? And I said a number of things and he said well why don't you aim for something higher? Be a doctor, you know, be a scientist or but, but just aim for something higher because he, he knew I had the ability and he believed in me and I thought, yeah, you're right, I'm, I am going to aim higher. Sort of over the next, I guess, three or four years as I, as I started to grow up, became more and more interested in science. It, there was a time in the early 60s when you know, science was, was everywhere, people were landing on the moon. Um, my father worked for a company that sold chemicals and he would come home, he was a salesman, he would come home with the back of his car full of boxes of test tubes and things like this. And so this, that science was something quite interesting, was always rattling around in my head. I was really an extremely untalented physicist, largely I think because my maths was very weak, still is very weak. Um, but the chemistry I enjoyed tremendously. I especially loved sort of identifying chemicals, you know, and distilling things and blowing things up, smelling things, you know, the beautiful colours and the reactions between them. And you just, it was just all terrific, really. 